In the first years of one of the most consequential military campaigns in the history of the Inner Sphere, the Clan Invasion, the return of the descendants of Alexander Kerensky's Star League Defense Forces from their exodus, Clan battle mechs would outperform and terrify their Inner Sphere counterparts in almost every capacity. In terms of raw firepower, speed, armor, and technology, these war machines revealed the true backwardness of the Inner Sphere in a display of brilliance and brutality. One of the standouts from the very start was a mech the Inner Sphere would dub as being the Dasher. But its true name is one which represents much of its splendor. The Fire Moth. A light mech weighing at 20 tons, the Fire Moth is the first 20-ton clan mech ever catalogued by the Inner Sphere, and is the first 20-ton Omnimech ever examined as well. When this first emerged, it brought with it, like many other clan machines, an air of wonder and terror for what it seemed able to accomplish. At the time, it was the fastest mech ever seen by the Spheroids though it would later be surpassed by other designs in both the Inner Sphere and the Clans. It is the forerunner and the inspiration for many designs just like it, a mech with blinding speed, and purely defended by it. But packing reasonable weaponry in order to achieve backstabbing attacks, to get out of trouble, or recon ahead and be able to return to friendly lines, even when pursued by dedicated anti-scout mechs. Before we delve further into its origins, one interesting note when it comes to clan manufacturing of battle mechs is it doesn't really reflect how the Inner Sphere does it. The Inner Sphere's mech manufacturing is more or less run by mega corporations with local branches. These then produce the various battle mechs affiliated with different houses. Whereas with the clans, they don't necessarily do this. There really isn't anything proprietary among the clans. Technology and designs are either owned and produced by a clan through reverse engineering or winning it by a trial, or they aren't. So, the Fire Moth itself doesn't really have a manufacturer in the same way that, say, a Locust would. For the Fire Moth, its life would begin in a clan many have never heard of, or at least one which has played a minimal role in the storyline of Battletech, which is namely Clan Cloud Cobra. It was only developed to the point of being a prototype by the Cobras themselves, but it was built with an interesting role in mind. Namely, it was meant to be an infantry transport mech and support platform, as well as a fast striking unit. It came equipped with dedicated infantry transport pods. In fact, in its original configuration, these pods were mounted on the arms, creating the awkward arm assembly that we see today. This prototype, however, was abandoned by the Cobras, who found its military application to be limited and due to failures regarding the infantry pods, as well as with the mask consistently failing at a higher rate than normally acceptable. Outside of normal clan interactions, as most trades of technology are truthfully done by trials, the Cobras would trade away the Fire Moss design in all of its perceived failure to the Ghost Bears, in essence, washing their hands of it. But where the Cobras saw failure, Clan Ghost Bear saw opportunity. They would adjust its arm mounts to be, in fact, higher on the mech, which apparently helped solve some balancing problems the Ghost Bear test pilots identified with the design. This, funnily enough, allowed the Fire Moth to perform its original role of infantry support even better, despite the loss of the infantry pods to the mech as the newly developed elemental units found easy purchase with locking into position on these portions of the mech, giving them the ability to ride into battle on the arms of this mechanical nuclear-powered chariot with the grace the Cobras had originally imagined. Elementals, in fact, almost never fall off of the Fire Moth despite its immense speed due to the arrangement of these arms reducing accidents and injuries while riding aboard the Fire Moth to near zero, outside of being fired on, of course. This means that the Fire Moth fulfilled the promise which the Cobras had designed it for. The Ghost Bears, before the end of the 29th century, would be producing these fast, battle-armor-supporting killers, 
and would be putting them to great use in clan trials against harsh opposition. Interestingly though, outside of its use within clan ghost bear, the fire moth is mostly considered to be unsuitable by other clans, who view its support role with a dismissive lens, and don't appreciate some of its worst qualities. Entertainingly enough, the Fire Moss role is only improved with the decline of Zelbringen in battles between the clans and the Inner Sphere, and later between the clans and other clans, giving it a combined arms flair that might be hard to match. It was never designed as a dedicated mech hunter, it was designed for speed and to support battle armor as well as to taxi them from place to place, offering them protection through its immense movement and speed, as much as the function of ferrying them. In fact, the Fire Moth, by Ghost Bear's equation, is so successful that they have opted to continue it and shirked away from doing wholesale new light mech designs to replace it, unlike many of their fellow clans. And they have done this all the way into the Ill Clan era, where it is still one of their primary light mechs. For the Inner Sphere, the Dasher, by comparison, outperformed almost any mech they could reasonably put against it, at least upon the initial invasion. When it scouted, their own anti-scouts couldn't keep up with it. When they engaged it with their anti-scout battle mechs, they would be outgunned, outmaneuvered, and overmatched in rapid succession despite its flaws. Only with later designs catching up with it were its full weaknesses laid bare and put on display for the Inner Sphere. This means it is used mostly in its intended role, and that is a role that it does exceptionally well. Though they would see use in every clan during the invasion to some degree, Fire Moss are largely only used by Ghost Bear in any real numbers, and they are only built by them as of the time of the clan invasion and all the way into the Ill Clan era. During this era, both Diamond Shark and Clan Wolf would use them as infantry support mechs, seeing the value the Ghost Bears recognized, even more so than its original creators, the now distant Clan Cloud Cobra. Being one of the first Omnimechs ever encountered by the Inner Sphere, the Fire Moth was truly a breakthrough in terms of its impact on the Inner Sphere's military understanding of next generation military technology, and its impact on logistics. This means that the 20-ton Fire Moth can change much of its equipment through its modular pod space, rather than through having to completely rebuild the mech. If a state is rich enough, these mechs offer a diverse way to deploy a mech into a multitude of roles without having to buy multiples of that mech. But the individual machines cost more, and the support behind them needs to be greater. The loss of Omnimex is extremely hard for the producers of them, for instance. So states or mercenaries which are heavily invested in them cannot afford to lose them frequently. What this does mean for the Fire Moth is that its base platform is comprised of its engine, base heat sinks, internal structure, and armor, but it has dedicated space for all other components in essence. The Dasher, being a mech built not around keeping costs low, comes with a series of advancements which were standard amongst the clans but were very expensive and advanced as far as the Inner Sphere was concerned. First, it has to use Clan Endo Steel internal structure, reducing its internal structure's weight by 50%, making it one ton. Unlike Inner Sphere Endo Steel, Clan Endo Steel has a much smaller footprint in regards to its internal structure as well. During this era, even for the clans, cockpits and gyros were almost universally standard, and this is no different for the Fire Moth. When it comes to electronics, this clan battle mech is served by the Untermark 4A for its communications, and by the Hack-On Microsystems targeting and tracking system. Neither of these confer the moth any additional benefits, however. When it comes to quirks for the advanced rule system, the Dasher is well served. It has the narrow profile quirk, making it harder to hit with ranged weaponry as to represent its small size which is one of the best attributes in the game. It also comes with the overhead arms quirk, helping its arm-mounted weaponry ignore partial cover benefits. The most impressive thing about the Fire Moth at its introduction and for much of its military history is its blinding movement. It is even what generated the name which the Inner Sphere dubbed it, 
that being the Dasher. To gain this immense speed, it has a comparatively enormous 4.5 ton Firebox 200XL engine installed into its frame, taking up almost 25% of the entire weight of the battle mech in this one component. To add to this, it has a mask as well, allowing it to make short bursts of enormous speed. Without using its myomer enhancing device, it has a top speed of 162 kilometers per hour, or 15 movement points in the tabletop game. When it uses its mask, it has a top speed of an insane 216 kilometers per hour, or 20 movement points in the tabletop game. This means without engaging its mask, when moving over relatively favorable terrain, the Moth can easily acquire a terrifying plus 4 to hit movement bonus from just moving over 10 axes. When engaging its mask, if terrain permits, the Fire Moth can reach a defensive bonus of plus 5. And when using the advanced rules, including its quirks, these are both enhanced by 1 when being targeted at range. This means that when a mech wants to shoot at the Fire Moth at medium range, with a standard pilot, they would need 11s without it using its mask and while benefiting from narrow. And that's if they didn't move. Absolutely terrifying. This speed is the core of the entire mech's design. It's what allows it to move elemental forces with grace throughout the battlefield. This is what allows the Fire Moth to backstab heavier adversaries as well. In addition, it's also what allows the Fire Moth to outfight and overmatch Inner Sphere Light Mechs. And it's what protects them from heavier machines and other reprisals. Speed is life for this battle mech. Make no mistake, without it, it is nothing. As an interesting final aside, piloting skills are immensely important for the Dasher in its survival, especially if it is fighting over paved ground, or slippery surfaces like ice. One failed piloting skill rule could lead to disaster, or the absolute destruction of the mech. This means while one might imagine its speed is only a strength, make no mistake, when misused in the wrong environment, it can be a horrible weakness which could outright annihilate the mech and its pilot. The Dasher comes with a base of 10 double heat sinks. This gives it a cooling of 20 every turn, and there is just not really much else it can do with the tonnage limitations it has. It is interesting to note that the engine is not big enough to carry all of the heat sinks already on board despite its immense size. So some of these double heat sinks are inside of the mech's critical structure. This is absolutely fine however, as it has more than enough criticals to accommodate this. The Fire Moth, also, will run cool or run hot depending on the pod space application much more than just being decided by its own independent heat management. Physical defense is where the single biggest compromise is made for the Fire Moth. It has only two tons of Clan Ferrofibers armor. Now, Clan Ferrofibers is so effective when used in this way that it almost receives the same amount of protection as three tons of armor, which is 38 points of armor. This means it's comparatively defended to most 20-ton Inner Sphere battle mechs from earlier eras but they aren't particularly durable themselves. The Fire Moth can be taken down by a single hard hit strike to the center torso, and will be penetrated by anything that supersedes 5 damage. A single Gauss Rifle making a direct hit is the end for this mech. A single AC-20 round hitting the side torso is again the end of this mech in its entirety. The Fire Moth is not a mech designed for direct confrontations with heavier battle mechs. It's just not. Its real defense, again, is its speed, and it can be used to gain immense to hit bonuses as to prevent fire from hitting it in the first place. But should that fail, it will be quickly dismembered and destroyed. Despite its huge engine and other components on board which make up much of its valuable tonnage, the Fire Moth comes with a proportionately enormous 6.5 tons of pod space to dedicate to other systems, including weaponry. Still, despite this comparative abundance of pod space, compared to its overall weight, its space still needs to be used wisely. In terms of the volume of configurations as well that use this valuable tonnage, there is an abundance. As a result, I will not be covering all of its configurations, 
as there are 16 official configurations as of the making of this video. And I instead will just be picking a few of them which I find interesting to talk about here in this video. The most frequently composed configuration of the Fire Moth is its primary loadout, which is a combination of missiles and lasers. And Mir is very much the loadout of the Inner Spheres Commando. This is great because it has high damage, hole punching weaponry like the twin clan ER medium lasers mounted in its left arm, which hit almost as hard as Inner Sphere large lasers. And then it backs this up with an enormous number of SRMs, namely an SRM 4 and an SRM 6. This build is only possible due to clan missile technologies, particularly the missile systems that are not augmented by Artemis or street components, because they are extraordinarily light, as before ammunition, its 10 SRM tubes weigh only 2.5 tons. It does have 2 tons of ammunition as well, which are automatically protected by its clan chassis having a built-in Case 1 system, making the battle mech more durable. The SRM-6 and its ammunition are found in the right arm, and its SRM-4 and its ammunition are found in the right torso. All in all, this is a versatile loadout for the Dasher, and works fantastically against any mechs it might come against, especially when firing into the rear armor of almost any battle mech in the game. Perhaps one of the most acutely built for a recon roll, the A configuration of the Fire Moth comes equipped to scout out targets and mark enemies for support assets to take out. The A's only offensive system is an SRM-4 streak with one ton of ammunition mounted on the right torso. Its right arm possesses a tag and a clan active probe, the former for marking the targets and the latter for penetrating enemy electronic countermeasure systems or finding hidden assets. It is then further defended with an anti-missile system as well. Overall, it does a great job at what it's meant to do, but is dangerously undergunned should it run into any kind of real resistance. Still, ideally this won't be running into battle alone, and it will either be accompanied by elementals riding on top of it, or by other battle mechs there to take the heat off of this recon asset. And in the worst case, ideally, it can just outrun the trouble it's in. Perhaps one of the most cynically armed battle mechs in its weight category, the D configuration is one of the most lethal 20-ton mechs ever made. Despite this variant running incredibly hot, with a full alpha strike of its lasers and it running, putting it 7 points of heat over in a single round, that's just no problem compared to the potential it has of landing 35 damage from its 5 clan ER medium lasers. This means that its full alpha strike does more damage than a full barrage of an AWS AQ Awesome and not even at that different of a range. More hilariously yet, these lasers are routed through a targeting computer. This means it has a bonus to hit targets and can target locations on enemy mechs more easily. To give an idea of its battle value, the Prime configuration has a battle value of 1251. The D configuration is considered to be so abusable for what it is, for the purposes of in-game points values, it has an in-game battle value of 2307, meaning that in a Fire Moth versus Fire Moth engagement, two Fire Moth Primes are approximately in the same value range as a single Fire Moth D. While absurd, its potential damage and capabilities are just too hard to ignore. This is a potential nightmare for any mech in Battletech to face, even heavier ones as it can concentrate fire and drill into the rear torso with very little effort. Someone in the development crew asked themselves once, what if I wanted a D configuration, but simply did not wish to be punished for taking it by having a battle value which is higher than Heinz Davian's blood pressure? They then came up with the perfect answer, and that answer comes in the form of the extreme risk-taking warrior that is the H configuration of the Fire Moth which has a battle value of only 779. With a range of only 90 meters, or 3 hexes, one might assume that this high-speed battle mech would be too much at risk to even be a real threat if it wants to engage. However, if the H gets into range, it is simply a nightmare. Guided by its targeting computer, of course, 
the H interlinks this with a total of nine heavy small lasers. While yes, if it fires all nine, despite the installation of an additional heatsink, it will overheat by seven, very much like the original D variant, it will do an assault mech compromising 54 damage, if all of its weapons land. A single volley from this mech will be enough to cripple or destroy almost any mech, should the pilot be accurate, which is made easier by the aforementioned targeting computer. It just needs to find a way to get to three hexes, which for many glory-seeking clan warriors, in a mech as fast as one named the Dasher by its inner sphere opponents, is quite easy to imagine. It's just if it can survive after the damage is done. With so many diverse designs, I didn't just want to focus on the most powerful and the most expensive ones, but also I'd like to display to you some of the more outside the box variants. What if someone hated infantry and tanks? What if someone wanted a fire moth to go against Clan Hell's horses? Or local planetary defenders within the Draconis Combine? Or Lyran Commonwealth? Well, the answer to this is the J variant, which uses an assembly of powerful weapons to get the job done. First, it comes equipped with twin ER small lasers in its left arm for dealing with most opponents. These are generalist backup weapons, even if their range isn't superb. Then, to back this up, it has an ER small pulse laser in the same arm, allowing it to strike more accurately against infantry and at reasonable ranges. It also can back up the ER small lasers. Finally, its main weapon, mounted in the right arm, is a terrifying clan-made plasma cannon with 10 rounds of ammunition. The plasma cannon generates damage through generating heat on a target. So while plasma rifles do 1 to 6 points of heat to mech targets and 10 damage, plasma cannons do no damage to the outside armored plating on their own, and instead do 2 to 12 points of heat to an enemy target. Vehicles and infantry, however, take raw damage from these attacks, which will burn those within the vehicle alive, dealing 3d6 damage to infantry and vehicles. Terrible. I only scratched the surface on the kinds of horror that the Fire Moth is able to bring to bear. Some variants contain things such as micro pulse lasers, or LRM launchers, or even heavy medium lasers and advanced technologies later on, such as superchargers or coolant pods. There is an abundance of firepower a volume of versatility, and an assortment of arrangements that make the Fire Moth something that is just too dangerous to ignore. Its speed and its threat capabilities are just too high. And when used well, either with being bold and allowing fortune to determine your fate, or by being coy and reserved, the Fire Moth is one of the most dangerous things that might appear on the tabletop. Some commanders don't even realize it either by having been knocked out by a lucky hit, or from using them in the wrong environment, or not supporting them, or striking at the wrong time. They have had bad experiences which may make them undervalue the Fire Moth. The Fire Moth requires finesse in order to achieve the results it can deliver. It is only further enhanced by using them in concert with elementals. A terrifying team-up would be a star with twin units of elementals riding twin Fire Moths being deployed ahead of a formation, and then being used in tandem to corner, harass, and pin down enemy lights and medium targets, while being supported by a fifth mech. Make no mistake, this battle mech, while being a glass cannon, is one of the most dangerous battle mechs to anyone not prepared for it. Pulse lasers, targeting computers, and good positioning are its bane. But even then, it can wait for the right moment to strike, to slip past the defenses like a blade between ribs, and to deliver a mortal wound to an enemy force. It's little wonder why Ghost Bear never moved to replace this monster. They are the main ones who see its potential for what it is, and the Dominion, for most of its history, has used it wisely to their advantage in the battles against enemies within their territories, and the enemies without, such as the Draconis Combine, Clan Wolf, Clan Jade Falcon, and Clan 
Hell's Horses. The Fire Moth itself even gave Clan Seafox the idea of creating a new battle mech to sell to other clans and inner sheer forces, namely the Dasher 2. Even Ghost Bear would buy some of these non Omnimechs in order to fill out their own ranks, but they never came close to replacing the first and true original, the Fire Moth. When this speed based abomination among Light Mechs puts itself into overdrive, and dashes into the fray. Misery will follow in its wake. A wise commander will know their enemy's true strengths in an engagement, and anyone facing down the Fire Moth should know it for the real danger that it is. Thank you for joining me here today. If you're looking to get the Plastic Fire Moth, they can be found either in the Alpha Strike Starter Box or the Clan Firestar Pack. It is to be also noted that both of these are different poses for the Fire Moth and will have a slightly different appearance. I will have a link to both of them in the description below if you're interested in them or if you're looking to grab them from either your local game store or you are looking to grab them directly online. But on another note, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I do updates very frequently and you'll be happy with the content, I think. Also a huge thank you to all the YouTube members for this channel. When you hit the join button and become a member, you take an extra step in supporting the content on this channel and I can't thank you enough because this content really is only possible because of viewers like you. And with that, I will catch all of you in the comment section below.